Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are joining me from. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Accept my greeting according to your time zone. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time I upload a video. You can be among the first to receive it. Then go to the comment section at all time. Leave your comment. Drop your contribution. If you have suggestions, make it out there. If you have any criticism, put it down on the comment section. It will make us to get better. Presenting you a better program. At the moment, Nigeria seems to be highly polarized along ethnic differences with a constant battle of citizenship versus state of origin. Joining us now on the show to discuss the unity of Nigeria after the 2023 election is Mike Ejiofor, former director of the Department of State Services. Good morning and welcome to the morning show. Thank you for having me. Good morning, Nigerians. Thank you, Mr. Ejiofor. Now, after, uh, in, in light of what I've just mentioned, I'd like to get your general assessment of the elections, particularly developments post-election. Well, the post-election reaction from Nigeria is just open in the public domain. Uh, suffice to say that um, actually it was quite unfortunate very unfortunate that uh, we have never been this divided along political, religious, and uh, ethnic uh, fault lines. If you look at the election, per se, you see, you go to Southwest, they voted Southwest for APC because of the presidential candidate. You go to the Southeast, the people voted for. Uh, the Labour Party. And if you go to the north, the votes were scattered. Although, if you come to Kano, you also see that uh, cleavage of an individual, which is not good for us. And uh, I can tell you that uh, Nigerians and Nigeria has never been this divided along these fault lines. And it's quite unfortunate. Now, having said that, how do we move forward to unite Nigerians? Uh, because without unity, without peace, there won't be any meaningful development. Thank God today is Good Friday. We need to make a lot of sacrifices. Christ made a lot of sacrifice for us. And uh, we, we also need to make sacrifice to see the continued existence of Nigeria. By this, I mean we, we need to amend our laws. And I believe that the national, the incoming National Assembly and the government should take the issue of unity very seriously. Apart from security challenges that we are mm. facing, which is also part of the disunity, this disunity is the greatest challenge we are facing. And I've come up with some uh, solutions on how we should go about it to unite Nigerians. You see, we have this citizenship. A Nigerian citizen is a citizen of Nigeria either by birth or by uh, registration and so forth. But your state of origin as a Nigerian, my, my passport does not carry state of origin. My passport carries Nigerian citizen. So I am suggesting that we should de-emphasize the issue of state of origin. I remember that this um, uh, former military president, Babangida brought it up uh, around 1991 that if you are born in a place, you automatically inherit that place as your state of origin. If you have lived in a place for one year and so on, you are automatically qualified to seek election in that, irrespective of where you are coming from. Look at from your intro, look at what happened in Lagos. The, the ethnic profiling. The Igbos are not alone in Lagos, but because the Igbos are migrants, they, they are virtually everywhere. The, this issue of um, profiling that uh, Igbos want to dominate Lagos, this shouldn't be. And the presidential, the gubernatorial candidate of the uh, Labour Party, because his mother is Igbo, you now say he's not Yoruba. But if we have, even among the various ethnic groups, there are intermarriages, and they don't quarrel at home. And yet, when they come to politics, because of political ambition of politicians, they use it to divide us. And I think 
our politicians should learn to bring us together instead of dividing us the more. So coming back to what I said, we are born in a place automatically inherit that. And how do we achieve this? We do it through legislation. The, the incoming National Assembly should work towards this. This is one of the things that can unite us. You are born in a place, that place becomes, you have an option of going to your earlier state of origin, or you adopt that place. You are, re, you are resident, you pay tax in a place for upward of uh, five years. You can contest election there. I recall that we had issues, you know, in the in, in the pre post election uh, post independence, where you have mayors, Hausa people, mayors in Enugu, in Lagos you have uh, people uh, from uh, the from the southeast, you know, occupying positions police uh, of political influence. So what? Where? How did we get here? What removed us from that cause that we are pursuing of uniting us? Now it is where you come from, who you are, who your mother is, who your father is, and it continues to divide us. The more we continue to be divided on these ethnic and uh, religious fault lines, there won't be any meaningful development in the country. Okay, you are quite right. In 1956, Malam uh, Atine Umaru was mayor of Enugu. And in Enugu politics, we even had uh, a certain Babasulu, you know, playing a major role in the politics of uh, Enugu in the southeastern part. Uh, you know, at that time. Uh, the Ibadan People's Party had uh, even an Igbo member. And Namdi Aziku became a member of the Nigerian uh, Legislative Council, representing Lagos uh, from 1946 uh, going forward. But how do you think that this country can heal and reconcile? Having moved from that uh, past, that's my number one question. My number two question is the DSS, where you worked where you retired from. The Department of uh, State Services has been accused of increasingly becoming an arm of the ruling government, the APC. APC members were told to write petitions and uh, DSS were act on that and say, oh, some people are calling for uh, interim government. Is there something in the enabling act of the DSS that says it must follow the political wish of uh, the government of the day of an, of an incoming political party? Those two questions. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Bati. Uh, first of all, uh, how do we heal our wounds? The wounds cannot be healed without fairness, equity, and justice. And due to this will manifest as the incoming government who have litigation, who have cases in court, pending the determination of the, uh, of the cases, who have a president-elect. If he forms a government, it should be an all-inclusive government. Nobody should be looked at as having voted for me or not voting for me. There should be fairness, there should be equity in distribution of offices and amenities. That's the only way we can heal the wounds. Then, secondly, uh, whether the SSS is an uh, arm of APC, well, I have never heard that any security outfit or secret uh, service is an arm of any political party. Um, agreed, certain things have happened uh, of recent. This is not the first time that the SSS has come out with an uh, adversary or uh, informing the public of what is upcoming. You recall that this issue of interim government has been in the public domain before the SSS issued a statement. And the question is, I have had a lot of commentaries on this. The issue is, why did the SSS not arrest the perpetrator before issuing that uh, uh, statement? I can tell you that if the SSS goes to issue a statement, uh, goes to arrest anybody without issuing a statement, the same SSS will be accused of political witch hunt. So, the responsibility of the SSS is to prevent and detect crimes. So, by issuing this alert, the perpetrators who have been known and identified according to the SSS report will be put on notice that if they continue, if you remember, the last part of that statement said that they should desist from 
going on in their criminal activities. And I believe that if they continue to go ahead, the SSS will effect arrest. Then on the issue of um, uh, not taking action, I am equally disturbed. You know, there were cases, for, for instance, I shouldn't be talking tongue-in-cheek now at my age. In the next few months, I'll be 70 years. My concern should be, what is the future of Nigeria? Where I'm going to is closer than where I'm coming from, if you understand what I mean. I don't see myself staying another 70 years. So we must tell truth to, the, uh, to power, tell people the truth, and let the truth make us free. I don't think the SSS was involved in this particular case we are talking of. I recall that before the election, they were, I don't, without mentioning names, in the Lagos, for instance, there were people who came out threatening that if certain people voted in favor of this, they would be dealt with, they would be shown the way out, and threatening that if you don't vote for any particular party, you don't come out to vote. No action was taken. There's another group, a, a traditional ruler of one ethnic group, too, again in Lagos, that came that uh, they should also come and uh, protect them since they feel no longer protected by government. After all, the primary responsibility of government is protection and welfare of the people. Now, the man has been arraigned and detained. So that is double standard. It comes to what I'm talking about, about equity, fairness, and justice. There shouldn't be double standard. There should be a level playing ground. Do unto A what you do to B, and there won't be any problem. But you see, when you give one measure to this survey, you'll be seen to be acting in a particular manner, which is detrimental to our national interest. All right, Mr. Geoffrey, I'd like you to, I would like to get your thoughts and comments around this issue with the uh, vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Dati Ahmed, in an interview where a number of people have, on one side, some say it is uh, tantamount to treason. In fact, the APC had asked the DSS to call him in, to invite him in, in to question him. Uh, Professor Walesho Inka, in an interview with us a few days ago, said that, or was it yesterday or two days ago, that um, it was fascist. He made a fascist statement. I don't know if you've been able to listen to or perhaps read his statements. I'd like to get your thoughts. Being, I mean, having worked with the DSS, how would you assess his statements? Were they treasonable? Was he fascist? Should he be invited in um, for questioning by the DSS? What's your um, thoughts on that? Well, for the vice presidential candidate of uh, the Labour Party, I listened to his interview and I've seen it uh, gone viral. Uh, he made a personal statement, and, uh, which is, uh, he's entitled to. But if he goes ahead, I believe that the SSS, if they have any evidence of pursuing that to a logical conclusion, action will be taken because nobody is above the law. In fact, this morning as I was uh, going through uh, my WhatsApp message, I also saw a similar thing attributed to the former vice president in 2015. It was in a, a channel's television, Shegun Akimbaloye, where he was asked similar question when they said that they would form a parallel government. The, the government did not do anything. So why this particular one? The, I can tell you that the SSS will continue to monitor events as they unfold, and anybody no matter how highly placed or how low you are, will be brought before the law. So uh, I believe that the vice presidential candidate made a statement, and the, uh, the SSS has not had any concrete evidence. I'm expressing my opinion to, to have invited him. Otherwise, they would have invited, uh, they would have invited him. You recall what I earlier told you of uh, the statement also credited to uh, the former vice president. And the statement made by the SSS warning politicians to desist from the issue of international government. Because in the first place, international government is not only unconstitutional, it's illegal. So if the SSS had gone to arrest either the, the, the Labour candidate vice president, you know the conflagration it would have also brought to the country. 
So we manage our sensibilities and see how we can handle this without compromising standard of security. Okay, Mr. Geoffrey. As we begin to wrap up, I would like to ask you for a general assessment of the performance of the security agencies during the elections on February 25 and March 18. The police collected so much money, and yet we saw the police supervising the snatching of uh, ballot uh, boxes. The only major agency that seemed to have done well will probably be the EFCC that was out there monitoring, you know, arresting people who were doing cash transfers and, and all of that. Other agencies who seem to have just gone to sleep. Why was that the case? Well, um, I also recall that uh, the Inspector General of Police addressed a press conference where over 587 offenders were arrested. So it would not be entirely correct to say that the police did not do anything. Don't also forget that policemen are Nigerians. You must have bad eggs within the various society. So the only thing I expect the police to do under this circumstance is to fish out the bad eggs and take appropriate disciplinary action. And I'm happy the relationship between the police service commission and the police management is smoothing. It will allow for a, a effective discipline of uh, like the chairman of the police service commission said, and fish out the bad eggs, discipline them, and that, let that serve as a deterrent to others. I've said this in times without number. If you travel by road between uh, between Okene and uh, Auchi, even before Auchi, you have more than 11 police checkpoints. What are they doing? Extorting money from people. So I believe that Police Service Commission and this uh, present uh, IG should look into all sorts of things and sanitize it. The police image needs to be enhanced. The police image needs to be built up. And uh, in fairness, this present IG too has been trying to instill discipline to the, to the police. But so finally, asking your, uh, answering your question, bad people, bad policemen, uh, supervising collection of money, they are still Nigerians. So it's the society we have that we get. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Michael Joe, for, for joining us. By the way, where are you? Uh, are you in a forest? It looks like you are somewhere that is not on the map of Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm enjoying my holiday at Ubuluku. That's my town in Delta State. <laughs> okay, okay. That, that's on the map of Nigeria, certainly. <laughs> thank you very much.